Welcome to Genesis Global Radio, the origin of information. And now here's your host, Christine Larkin. Hello and thank you for tuning in to Genesis Global Radio, the origin of information. I'm your host, Christine Larkin. Today's segment is a tribute to Dr. Stephen Vladim, an exceptional man whose life was tragically cut short in a car accident just this September. American evangelist Billy Graham once said, Comfort and prosperity have never enriched the world as much as adversity has. Dr. Vladim was the prime example of facing adversity head-on and coming through it with enthusiasm and a positive outlook for the future. Everyone thought he would be a surgeon due to his supreme intelligence and high IQ. But when his vision posed a threat early in his life, this dream was not to be fulfilled. Dr. Vladim decided instead to focus on his skills in math and became a teacher, working with gifted students in the Chicago area. I first met Dr. Vladim when I interviewed him on another radio show, and he was to join me here on Genesis Global Radio to talk about the many projects he was working on. We had only spoken days before his untimely passing. Dr. Vladim had survived the odds of cornea transplant, and his life's mission was to bring awareness to transplant surgery and his dream of opening transplant centers around the world. He also loved film and felt this was the perfect medium to bring his story to the big screen. He formed a production company called Diamonds in the Rough and began his journey into filmmaking. As fate would have it, one day while at a screening, he met actress and model Christy Krocheski, who quickly became a colleague, close friend, and confidant. She is here with us today to pay tribute to the legacy of Dr. Stephen Vladim. Christy, it's my esteemed pleasure to have you on our show today. Welcome. Hi, thank you. So good to have you here, and again, how sorry I am for this untimely passing of Dr. Vladim. Uh, we share that, that common heartfelt sorrow. So tell us how you met Dr. Vladim and what you were working on together. I first met Dr. Vladim at a film event in downtown Chicago. Um, Him and I were working on some film projects, TV show ideas, and awareness of organizations that Dr. Vladim had wanted to help. Mm -hmm. What were some of those? Uh, Some the film projects that we were working on was Pierogi Blues, uh, Convergence of Faith, uh, Shopworn Angel. In TV shows, we were, you know, um, just mind-boggling daily about what we can do because Steve knew people that worked on board of the National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences Division mm-hmm. in the Midwest. Mm-hmm. And um, and then the charity organizations that I had wanted to help out with him were uh, awareness of trans- transplant awareness, yeah. For people needing transplants, like Steve had, mm-hmm. um, had gotten on himself, which made his life complicated. Um, when you learn more about his story, and others learn more about his story, they'll learn about that too. And also um, helping disabled children. Steve had always wanted to help children out. He was a philanthropist. He just was very giving and very kind to all. Mm-hmm. Yes, he he really had an enthusiasm. Uh, that was infectious. I mean, just to, I never had the honor of meeting him in person, uh, but certainly worked with him enough over the radio that I got a really good sense uh, of who he was as an individual uh, and then as a professional and as a son. Uh, he was, he really loved uh, deeply his parents and often spoke uh, of his mother and his late father and how much. They put wings under him uh, to continue on in his life uh, and his passions. So what message do you think Steve would have wanted to give the world? I think Steve was really about spreading peace amongst religions and amongst each other. Um, He demonstrated that by uh, receiving prestigious awards from uh, multiple organizations. Mm-hmm. Like, I think, Oxford, right? Wasn't that one? Uh, and, and what other uh, esteemed uh, establishments? He, uh, he worked with the, the, uh, the Southern Poverty of Law. I, he did some documentaries 
for them, um, again, you know, to the Southern Poverty Law Center's mm-hmm. uh, teaching tolerance program. He was an advocate of sorts against bullying, um, mm. and he would promote peace internationally through the London Diplomatic Academy, mm-hmm. hoping that he can do more with that. Um, and he was an adv- advocate for the disabled, and he just... He really didn't want to see anybody get harassed or bullied like he had. Tell us a little bit about that. It was early in his, his childhood, wasn't it? Yes, yes. Yeah. And and what happened? Um, when he was four years old, he had an attack by an older boy, and then he had to be taken to the hospital and given an antibiotic that caused his eyes to bulge mm. from an allergic reaction. Mm. And because of that, you know, the effects, you know, were devastating because the rest of his life he was going, the doctor told him that he was going to be struggling with keratoconus, carot, I'm um, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that appropriately, mm-hmm. um, with eye abrasions and wear painful contact lenses. Um, so it, it was just devastating for him to not be able to see clearly throughout mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. But it did later on, uh, it, he had another surgery, uh, and, and it did ultimately improve his eyesight, did it not? Yes, yes. It, still, uh, it did improve his eyesight a little bit more, but not to be 100% clear like mm-hmm. he should have been throughout his life. Yeah. But it inspired him to want to bring awareness to transplant, and the fact that maybe opening transplant centers around the world uh, would really give an opportunity to people in maybe lesser uh, or undeveloped countries to get a transplant where they may not have ever even dreamed this was a possibility. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm-hmm. It was a, a big passion. So what do you think Steve's greatest accomplishment is? I think Steve's greatest accomplishment was being on the cover of Profiles magazine with Donald Trump Jr. Mm, yeah, I yes, saw that. Yes. And he always wanted to show everyone that, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he sent me a copy, and I have it right on my desk. I actually looked at it before I left to come to the studio today. Me, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I thought of keeping it here with me, and I thought, no, I'll, I'll just keep his angel wings around me. <laughs> but like I, he's always looking at us. <laughs> right. He's he's always there. So um, he was very passionate uh, about film, and it was sort of a, a lark, I think. That's the sense that I got, uh, that he got involved in this industry. And I know uh, he loved it so much, and he spoke very highly of you and how very happy he was to come into your your path. Um, he was the executive producer on Pierogi Blues, a film that you mentioned earlier. Uh, tell us about the film and, and what it meant uh, for Steve to be a part of it from, from your perspective. Well, Pierogi Blues is a documentary film about Poland and the Chicago Blues. And um, I think Steve, you know, knowing that he's very passionate about filmmaking, he saw this film as an opportunity to add a scene in that would be a part of his vision of peace, mm-hmm. um, you know, because he was involved with spreading peace throughout the world. The scenes that were in the documentary really captured his eye to want to put John Paul Pope II in there reaching out. Mm. So he was really sort of a prince of peace. I mean, having something like that happened to you early on in your life makes you more compassionate and sensitive and aware of people who were victimized through bullying or prejudice and and ultimately being handicapped because certainly he was on some level handicapped with his vision. Tell us a little bit more about um, his compassion uh, for people that that were uh, handicapped. He... um because he had a handicap, you know, in he suffered with that throughout his life. If um, certain people that he would associate with or see that were, you know, um, not not within the normal human living mode daily, you know, he'd want to just, you know, be their friend always, mm-hmm. and you know, um, would always just want to educate them on 
all different topics and always be a friend always be friendly treat them like they're like they're um like they have no disability right. at all right just come to them as a man to man you know human to human and yes. and seeing their you know having that compassion for their handicap and and their suffering i think because when you're handicapped you you do suffer on some level i mean we all do however Sometimes there's a lot of outcasting. Uh, they get made fun of. You know, uh, I come from a family where I had two handicapped siblings, and I witnessed uh, sort of the, uh, not prejudice, but the, uh, now I'm lost for a word, um, alienation uh, that they felt at times from, you know, the kids in the neighborhood, although there were always some kids that really embraced them. Uh, I'd like to take a moment and talk a little bit about uh, Phil Ranstrom, who is the creator of Pierogi Blues. I know, again, this was a very passionate project. Uh, I'd like to introduce him. He is um, up in Chicago. Uh, he worked closely with Dr. Vladim. Thank you, Christine. So glad that you could come on the air with us. So tell us how you met Dr. Vladim and, and how your working relationship ensued on this film. Well, actually, I was contacted by his friend Christy uh, on Facebook. Uh, they had seen a uh, uh, web page about my uh, documentary, uh, and I was trying to raise funds to finish the film. And um, uh, Christy contacted me and told me that Steve had seen the uh, uh, the, uh, the trailer and was really impressed and uh, wanted to be involved with it. So we just took it from there and uh, and, and got together. That's pretty cool. So he was the executive producer on the film, is that right? That's right. He, uh, uh, you know, I you know, basically an executive producer is the person who does the marketing, the finances. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they can be a variety of places, but it's mostly about money mm -hmm. and um, uh, funding. And uh, uh, luckily, uh, Steve also had some great ideas about uh, the promotion and the marketing uh, of the film, uh -huh. had other connections film industry, and of course wanted to, to align himself with this uh, unique project because of the Sundance component uh, and the ability to, you know, go to this high-level festival mm -hmm. uh, and uh, network uh, there you know, for his other projects. So tell us about the, what is the storyline of Pierogi Blues, and then your hope is to have it at the Sundance Film Festival? Mm -hmm. That's right. Wonderful. Um, Basically, a couple of years ago, I have had a relationship with Fender Guitars for, I don't know, the past four or five years. Uh, Del Breckenfeld, the director of entertainment marketing there at Fender, um, uh, uh, is a former Chicagoan and had heard about my uh, previous work uh, about Chicago's Maxwell Street, mm -hmm. which was the home of the Electric Blues and immigrant refuge for over 100 years. It was served as sort of the Ellis Island of the Midwest and with a, a, a funky, uh, colorful outdoor market where you could literally buy anything. Uh, it was at one time the third highest shopping district in Chicago where an uh. average of 20,000 people visited during the day. And I did a, the historical documentary uh, on this unique place called uh, Cheat You Fair, the Story of Maxwell Street. Mm -hmm. It's narrated by actor Joe Montaigne, who's also a former Chicagoan. I had been to the market many times. and. It was the home of the blues, and Gell, being a musician and being with Fender, wanted to be involved with projects that were unique and um, uh, would, you know, uh, were also about music. And so he got involved, and uh, through a long series of relationships and connections, we uh, eventually made our way to Sundance Film Festival in 2008 with that nice. film, and uh, premiered it there, and uh, were able to make some uh, amazing uh, connections while we while we were there. In any case, Dell and I have continued on with other uh, smaller projects and uh, one of the things he, he mentioned a couple of years ago was, you know, this idea of us going to Poland and shooting the Polish blues scene because really nobody had done it, but it's a <laughs> vibrant movement that's been going on for some time and um, he knew I was the guy that could 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 make it happen. And um so he contacted me. We had several discussions about it. Um, uh, I was able to get the money and uh, uh, find a film crew from uh, Prague. And uh, there were a couple of expat Americans living in Prague uh, from UCLA. Mm -hmm. uh, they were from, originally from California, but landed there 
and had a big production company, and they were perfect. So they not only spoke English, but were very talented. And uh, I uh, rented a van and a GPS system, and for two weeks, we went on this road trip through Poland in search of the blues. <laughs> Cool. It, it's so unique. And I know that Dr. Vladim was so ecstatic about being a part of this project. He, he spoke of it often. Uh, and, and thank you for sharing that story with us. So I understand that you still need some funds. Uh, if people want to contribute, how can they do that? Well, they can contact me directly. It's probably the easiest way at my email address at phil.ranstrom. That's spelled phil, P-H-I-L, dot Ranstrom, R-A-N-S-T-R-O-M, at gmail.com. Great. And uh, by contacting me, I can then steer them to either our Indiegogo page or we can just talk directly and, uh, and, and work this out. But it, but it really is a unique opportunity going to Sundance. And I think for anybody who has other aspirations, of either in the show business world, entertainment world, or you know, with other business ventures and wants mm-hmm. to meet some high-profile people with, with money, um, that's the place to do it, certainly. Yeah. Well, wonderful. We hope that you get there. And, you know, for, for Dr. Vladim, his legacy lives on. Uh, may the film, you know, win lots of awards, get accepted first, right? And then yeah. tell us quickly, we only have a few uh, seconds left here, yeah. what it's sure. like to submit, and then what is the waiting process like to get chosen to be in the festival? Well, we basically, it's a, it's a very complicated process of, of filling out lots of forms and submitting the film. And they just go through literally thousands of films. And uh, I'm not sure how they do it all, because it seems a pretty impossible task to me. But mm-hmm. they're able to do it somehow, and uh, they select their uh, their films. And a lot of it's who you know. And, and oh, as yeah. I say, with Thunder Guitars, they've been a wonderful door opener for us. And uh, we're kind of guaranteed to get in, not the festival in competition, but to be able to showcase it uh, right in their Fender Lodge, right on Main Street, which is a high-traffic area. Oh, well, you know, bravo to you. Congratulations. And Mm -hmm. thank you for for sharing with us. Again, that's Phil. You're welcome, Phil. Phil Phil.Ranstrom at gmail.com to contribute to Progy Blues. Thanks so much, Phil. All the best. Thank you, Christine. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye now. So I'm going to uh, make a mention here a little bit about Dr. Vladim Loved music also. So he was a patron of the arts. He knew that I was a singer. Uh, It was his hope to have me sing at the uh, U.S. premiere uh, of this latest project up in Chicago. So I've chosen two songs, uh, one that I wrote and one that is a standard, uh, and I'd like to sing a little bit of each of those songs. Uh, This is for you, Steve, wherever you are, shining down on us. I originally wrote this song for my mother uh, when she passed, and I changed the lyrics a little bit, so here we go. Summer's ending, fall is on the rise. Leaves are falling, birds fill the sky. You were a good son, brother to everyone. Now the Lord has called you to his side. How we hate to see you go away. Floating on the stars and Milky Way. We will see you soon. Floating around the moon. I guess for now. We'll have to say goodbye. Ba da ba da ba 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 da ba ba da ba da ba da ba ba ba. Life for us will never be the same. We'll hear the angels calling out your name. You were so much fun, brother to everyone. Now we'll have to make it on our own. Now the Lord has called you to his home. I think Steve would have loved that song. 
And the next song is a favorite standard of mine uh, called Autumn Leaves. How appropriate for this beautiful season that is uh, upon us. The falling leaves drift by my window. The autumn leaves of red and gold. I see your lips, the summer kisses, the sunburned hands I used to hold. Since you went away, the days grow long, and soon I'll hear old winter song. But I miss you most of all, Dr. Vladim, when autumn leaves start to fall, when autumn leaves start to fall. That's for Dr. Vladim. I know that he heard that up in the heavens. So, Christy, how can we help support the legacy of Steve's life? Where can people go to read about him, find out more about him? You can help support the legacy of Steve's life by reading about his life story in Inspiring Hope, Stories of Hopeful Living for More Success by Tom Lisk. Um, and you can also look him up on Cambridge's Who's Who. And then just support anything with his name on it. Mm -hmm. And tell us a little bit about how the Profile Magazine uh, article came about. He was reached out to for the Profiles magazine by being in Cambridge's Who's Who. They read about him in Cambridge's Who's Who and contacted him then to be on the cover of Profiles magazine and have an article about him in there as well. So he, he really uh, got a real charge out of this publicity, didn't he? Tell us what that meant for him to see his picture uh, and his name in print. I think um, Steve really, really was proud of all the publicity that he had received with print and being published in books, and he was so proud of that. And um, the goal of his was to be able to share all this with his mother and father. And he had wanted to make his mother and father proud, always. He had always said that his mother is like an angel. Um, and his dad's positive attitude was always with him, too, in spirit. So he was so proud to show his mother, you know, the Profiles magazine. Um, and he was just really always striving to make his mother smile. Mm. I'm sure she did quite a bit. She was so proud of him. Yes, yes. Yeah. She's a very, very kind woman. I did have the chance to meet her. Oh, how wonderful. Yeah, I saw a picture recently of, of him uh, with his mother. Uh, pretty incredible. So, Christy, uh, tell us, you know, keeping this legacy of Steve's life, um, what, what in, in a few words, tell us what it was like for you to now have Steve a part of your life? Steve was like my best friend. You know, he was someone that you can always rely on, somebody um, that just knew what you wanted without even, you know, telling him. So, mm. you know, it, he changed my life because, you know, he's able to just um, see my talent and, you know, have me as a friend and just know what I need in life and, um, you know, we're, we were able to have a good time together, and you know, and he would teach me a lot of things mm -hmm. that I did not know before, all yeah. about the film industry. Ah, so he taught you, huh? Oh yes, yes. Oh, that's amazing. So you'll just have to go on and and book more work to live on his dream and your dream, kind of like kindred spirits there, huh? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, Steve was a very giving person. He always, always wanted to help people, you know, and just have them shine and um, always make people feel good. Mm. Bring out the best in them, huh? Yes. yes. Yeah. And, and I think that, you know, just from the pictures that I've seen of him, he had a very 
kind of whimsical uh, and infectious smile. I mean, he just was. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. His face just glowed when he smiled, as did his eyes, ironically enough, right? You know, it, it, it just, the shine through his eyes was amazing. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, Christy, it's just been great meeting you through him. Uh, although the circumstance is unfortunate, uh, I am very happy that you and I got to meet over the radio. Uh, maybe someday in person I'll come see you in a in a premiere. I want to give out some contact information uh, if anybody uh, wanted to get in touch with Christy. Uh, and, and, you know, maybe make a contribution even to the, the film Pierogi Blues because they're still looking uh, for ways to raise some money to finish up the production, get it out there. And I understand wanting to submit it to the Sundance Film Festival. So that would be amazing if it got there and, and won an award. So get in touch with uh, Christy Karcheski at christynicolename at gmail.com. That's K-R-I-S-T-Y-N-I-C-O-L-E. N-A-M-E at gmail.com. She's on Facebook, and that's Christy, K-R-I-S-T-Y, uh, Karcheski, K-A-R-C-Z-E-W-S-K-I. If you want to look at her portfolio, she does some modeling uh, at models.com. It's got to put in that H-T-T-P colon slash slash portfolios dot models dot com slash four three five seven two nine. And Tierra Magazine, she's uh, a model there. Models at tierramag.net, and that's T-I-A-R-A-M-A-G dot net. So you opened up your worlds to each other. Yes, yes. Yeah, and maybe worlds that, that neither of you would have come across had you not met. Right, yes, yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, because he was so uh, brilliant. I mean, really gifted intellectually, and yet he had this humble uh, groundedness about him because of the struggles he went through personally, and then this uh, empathy and compassion for others uh, that were victimized or handicapped. Uh, You know, to have that balance is very unique. Um, Were you a witness to that balance that he possessed? Yes, yes, absolutely. Well, he is among us always, an angel in heaven. Uh, I will never forget Dr. Vladim. And thank you so much, Christine, for having this tribute out to him and letting everyone know about his life. For upcoming segments, log on to www.genesisglobalmedia.com and keep your finger on the pulse of the hottest brands on the planet.